I'm sorry, I don't speak French very well. That's what it's all. Embarrass myself. I took French as a child in middle school for four years. Yeah. So I can and I can kind of read it and understand it. Okay. Oh. But I can't. So if, if I we, spoke it, it would be embarrassing. <laughs> but if I have a problem with yes, the, with the can, world, you can yes, help you can, me. Yes, I can That's try. That's great. I speak Italian. Oh, but I don't. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it's similar in some ways. Yeah. You wrote two books, two novels. Yeah, and I've written one two novels. Essay, uh, San Francisco Noir. Yes. Noir in French. Yeah. Yeah. Noir. It's a French. Yeah, it comes from from French. Mm. What did um, you say? Uh, my name is Nathaniel Rich. I'm a writer from New York City. I live in New Orleans now. I've uh, published two novels. Um, Odds Against Tomorrow is appearing in French. I write essays also about literature and film, and I also do some um, journalism, and, uh, yeah, primarily a novelist. Yeah, you would say that. Yeah. Uh, so you were born in New York, I guess? I was and born in New York, yeah, 1980. And, yeah, and now you live in New Orleans? Yeah, I felt like it was time for me to leave, that I wanted to live and work in a different place. And uh, my question was also, but it's ironic, but you, you know irony when uh -huh. we, we read your book, but uh, you, you were in New York and I know um, you didn't write it um, because of that, because you, you wrote your novel before Sandy, but now you live in New Orleans and you know, Katrina, yeah. so we, we can't think about that. It's very strange, I mean, yeah, I, I finished the novel uh, right, I was editing the final proofs of the novel right when Sandy hit um, in 2012, and yeah, and I moved to to New Orleans five years after Katrina, and it did affect the way I wrote the novel. I mean, I had I had finished you know a draft by the time I moved to New Orleans, but uh, living in the city, especially for the final third of the novel, which takes place after flood. Um, living in a city that had gone through that uh, and that the trauma of the experience was still uh, you encountered every day I mean you still do ten years later um, was uh, instructive for me and it changed the way I conceived of the final section of the book I rewrote the final section Sandy did not inform the novel because it had uh, occurred after I wrote it but it was a funny thing, I mean, in, in the U.S. when I was, when the book was published in 2013, it was right after Sandy, and the first question I would get in any um, interview or on a book tour was, oh, is this your, your fictionalization of Sandy, is this your novel about Sandy? And I'd have to explain that, no, it took, takes me about five years to write it, finish a novel, and it was done already, but it, it uh, I think the... Um, the, the, the storm had followed so closely with all of the sort of scientific predictions. Um, I think literature is a, is, is a place where um, I don't think it can be very useful in advocating for you know, policy change or political change, but I think it is a place where we can start to make sense of uh, what it means to live at a time uh, when this is happening and, and to understand how it affects our, our individual lives. Like, it gets back to the same question of, you know, how does any individual respond to this? Um, and so that's, uh, that's something I want to write about. It's there in the novel, but it's not, I mean, I never talk about, there's no mention of climate change or global warming. I think increasingly there'll be more and more novels that that try to ask these questions, but it has they don't exist yet, mm. really. And we will call it um, Seattle Generation. Yes, yeah, yeah, Generation Seattle. <laughs> as, as yeah, a, yeah. yeah, as me too. I know. Well, <laughs> Seattle is in trouble with the earthquake. That's yeah. that's not that has nothing to do with climate change, but um, yeah, but uh, Mitchell is, is belongs to the so-called Seattle yeah, Generation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
But uh, you said, um, I, I don't want to, to answer questions, I want to, to ask questions. And I think something is very important in your book, in the structure of your book. It's, it's um, written in a third person mm -hmm. by, uh, uh, I don't remember his newspaper, uh, a Wall Street, Street Journal, Journal. Yeah. Uh, uh, journalist, yeah. uh, who knew um, Mitchell as a college student. Is it important for you that everything uh, um, stays um, from the outside in a way, and it's also inside, but ambiguity is the most important, if yeah. you understand what I mean. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, there is some ambiguity, but I think it's more ambivalence. Yeah, you know, that's that, what I meant. Yeah, and yeah. it's more um, opposing ideas, and, and the characters sort of have different ideas about about things, and they kind of switch places at a certain point. But um, yeah, I think for a novel to be successful, or a novel like this to be successful, there has to be a very um, sort of strong polarity uh, of of ideas, meaning that there has there have to be um, opposing views that are both expressed very clearly and strongly and, and passionately on on either side. Um, and if it's only on one side, then it becomes dogmatic and sort of bad literature. Um, but I think with any difficult issue, there, there usually aren't clear answers. And so what's important is creating um, a way in which to engage these questions at a high level and, and hopefully in new ways. Um, and I think the, the characters all grapple with these ideas but, and, and come out with different conclusions. But I think that's true of all of us as human behaviors, that um, there are lots of reasonable conclusions to draw about you know, something like, like uh, environmental anxiety. It's like, well, is it is the right thing to do to go work for Greenpeace and um, uh, blockade a, you know, an oil company? Or, or should we just focus on you know, providing for our own families? And, or should we just be in the middle and kind of recycle a lot? Or, you know, I don't think there's one correct answer. Um, and I think we all have to make these decisions for ourselves. And, and, um, but what's important is to understand that we are making decisions. You know? yeah. and, and that's um, where I think there's a role for literature to play. In that it, it allow, Literature creates a kind of, um, I mean, when I read a novel that I really uh, respond to, admire, um, I find what happens is it allows for, uh, sort of counterintuitively, for a kind of introspection. It allows for me to think more about how I think, uh, to examine my own thoughts, you know. Um, and so uh, I think a good, good l literature, great literature works that way. Is it, yes, it creates uh, these fictional situations and it, it, it brings something to it, but it also allows the reader to bring his own understandings and, to it. Um, it allows for reflection. So um, that's my hope for the novel, that it can, it can cause some reflection, but I don't intend to tell people how, what conclusions they should reach. You know? mm. And there are something important for that. It's uh, irony and humor. Yeah, I think but it's important to, um, I mean, I, if, I, if I read a book that is humorless, I tend to lose interest. I mean, I think, uh, and part of the fun of, of this subject is that there's something, there's, there's sort of an inherent black comedy in any discussion of disaster. Um, uh, you know, I think there's a very, there's, there's this fine line between comedy and horror. They both sort of use surprise and, and high stakes situations. Um, but you kind of can come down on either side of it. And so I think in the novel, I was hoping that sometimes you come down on the side of horror, but sometimes you come down on the side of, of comedy. And of course, there's something just humorous about a character obsessing about all kinds of worst case scenarios that may never come to pass. Um, and it's also, I think it's just, it's, it's human also just to find humor in, in dark places. And so I, that was important to maintain that in the novel. No, and fun and fear. It's yeah, almost. yeah. There's something fun about. I mean, also there's there's fun in, in obsessing about terrifying things because it's a, it's almost a form of um, 
distraction and, and, and enter, sort of if you're entertaining yourself because when you you know obsess about uh, some um, super volcano in Yellowstone, you're not obsessing about your own personal problems and the things in your own private life that are bothering you. So there's a kind of distraction that that um, you're engaging in, and then Mitchell also grapples with this, like he's obsessed about all these sort of public scenarios, but then he loses track of his own private life, you know, I think, and we all tend to do that, to, or I tend to do that at least to, to some extent. Mm. So you speak about you, I saw um, on your Twitter account, uh -huh. you, you write, um, so the, the sentence above your account, uh -oh. uh, soon all sorts of strange things will come. Oh, yeah. What do you mean? Uh, that's from the, yeah, that's a wasp, that's in the, the, the novel, it's on... Um, I think it's the Wasco tribe, it's a tri Indian tribe yeah. prophecy um, that just stuck with me. Uh, I just, um, I don't know, I like that idea. <laughs> just the sense that we don't really know what's coming, but we know it will be a surprise, you know. Um, but it, it put very uh, kind of poetically by the, the tribe, I think. Yeah, and strange uh, things, is it also your uh, next books? Could you tell us uh, something about your next novel? Because I... the well, my first novel. No, no, the next a, one. The, next, no. the future one. Yes, yeah, the future one. Uh, You're writing yes, it. I'm so? writing it. Yes, I'm. Uh, it. Uh, I can't say that much about it, but no. it has a. There's a sort of noir quality, and um, and it's a historical novel, which is not something I ever expected to do, but uh, but it is, and uh, there's. Um, Let's see. All kind. There, there's there's a sort of about man's uh, reconfiguration of the natural world to suit his own uh, specifications. It's part of it. There's also a, a murder mystery and a bunch of other things. Um, but it's uh, I can't really speak about it yet because it's not ready, and I don't want to uh, you know jinx anything. Um, I'm still, but I'm getting very close, and I'm excited about it. But. Um, Still, probably a couple of years away. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You don't write in, an, in the night. No, you see Sandy in, in the news, <laughs> and, and you write it. So. I know. I don't. I don't <laughs> want to take my first novel. Took me six years. This took me five years. I'm hoping the next one I get at least down to, to four. To but four. It, it shouldn't take that long. I don't like that it takes that long. I feel like it shouldn't take that long. But things happen. Delays happen that are often out of your control. And